Let's look at a few other matters now and the argument about the security vetting of asylum seekers, those fleeing the Palestinian territories. The government's saying the opposition's whipping up fear. Is an hour to process a protection visa too quick, though? Kieran, the opposition is whipping up fear on this issue. And I want to be clear with your viewers that when Peter Dutton was Home Affairs Minister, he provided visas to 12,500 Syrians at the rate of 500 a week. He provided visas to 5,000 people coming from Afghanistan. We have provided visas to a bit more than 300 people who are, who are arriving from the conflict in the Middle East. This is the same department, the same people, the same process. None of that has changed. So for Peter Dutton to be saying that bringing in 300 people over that time frame versus the many thousands he brought in very quickly under the same process with the same people, suddenly there's a security risk now. I mean, he has to be honest with the Australian people and say, is he just saying this for politics or does he believe that the system that he operated was in some way flawed? But can you have reassurance that a... a a visa passed within a day or just an hour or two does the sufficient security checks. You wouldn't feel comfortable, surely, with Hamas sympathisers if any snuck through the process uh, arriving in Australia, surely? Well, the Department of Home Affairs has an enormous database that they have built over a very long period of time that database enables them to run the proper checks. These are the checks that, as I said before, operated while Peter Dutton was Minister for Home Affairs. And the flow through those, those checks is a much lower rate than the flow through that he was operating at the time that he was bringing in people from Syria and Afghanistan. So this is completely hypocritical criticism from Peter Dutton when the government is currently operating the same process, the same people and the same department. But suddenly now, because it's Labor in charge, he's full of criticisms. Where were those criticisms when he was running that show? Let's look at the uh, ec economy now. 4.2% growth for wages. Innes Willox from the Australian Industry Group is, is warning that it could be the thin end of a dangerous wedge if these wages... Uh, this wages growth is not accompanied by parallel productivity improvements. Um, are you, do you have any concern that the wages increases might be unsustainable? Well, we have had a long period of negative real wages growth, Kieran. So it is good news for Australian workers that real wages growth is now positive. You're absolutely right. We need to make sure that productivity is also growing because ultimately productivity growth underpins sustained real wages growth. But the fact that we now have positive real wages growth is a validation that the government's economic plan is working. We inherited negative real wages growth from the Liberals when they were in government. We've now made it positive. We inherited rising inflation from the Liberals when they were in government. We now have inflation falling. We inherited a budget that was in the red under the Liberals. We now have the budget in the black. So this is another piece of evidence that the government's economic plan is working and it's building a stronger Australian economy. Do you think the RBA will be comfortable with that level of wages growth? Well, the government doesn't comment on decisions by the independent Reserve Bank but they take in a whole range of factors into their interest rate decisions. And a lot of the factors that they're looking at are heading in the right direction. We have inflation coming down very rapidly. We inherited inflation running on a quarterly basis at 1.8% per quarter. We now have it at 0.6% per quarter. So it's come down by two thirds. Obviously that gives the RBA more room to move when they're making interest rate decisions. So the, R the RBA will make those decisions as it sees appropriate, taking into account all the factors, but a lot of those factors are heading in the right direction and will be welcomed by the RBA in their deliberations.
And uh, let's just uh, conclude where we uh, kicked off with that, that issue and, and Peter Dutton making the point in a number of car yards around Australia is in Parramatta again today. I just want to just finish off by asking you, why is the government pushing this line now? Just I noticed that Joe Biden's administration's winding his back or at least slowing down the emission standards to drive more EV take-up. They're slowing it down. We're pushing ahead with it. Why, why don't we also have a second thought? I mean, I, I think that's a, that's a little unfair comparison to say the United States is slowing down and we're pushing ahead because the reality is we're a long way behind the United States. They have had vehicle emission standards in place for a much longer period of time uh, and they have worked. And for that reason, uh, emissions standards in the United States are stronger and Australia is well behind. So this is about Australia catching up to the United States from a position well behind them, not about Australia heading off uh, in front of the United States or any other country. So I think this is a very reasonable policy. It's a policy that, in fact, was proposed by the previous government. Uh, they just never went through and actually implemented it. It's a policy that will make sure that Australian motorists have greater choice and the international manufacturers can't use Australia as a dumping ground for their poor efficiency vehicles. Member for Parramatta, Andrew Shelton, appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kieran.